It's a summer tour unlike any other, from the Commonwealth to the Caribbean. The Kentucky men's basketball team makes their four-year pilgrimage down to the Bahamas and now from beautiful Baja Mar Resort over the crystal blue waters. It's time for basketball. And this team, which is put together with some promising freshmen, the reigning national player of the year and a couple transfers, is ready to get it going tonight and a full week of basketball this week. Welcome to Drake's Big Blue Bahamas featuring the Kentucky Wildcats and the first game of the week against the Dominican National Select Team. And with that, we welcome you inside Baja Mar Resort as we get set for game number one. Welcome everybody, Tom Hart alongside Dane Bradshaw. Nice tan you have working so far, and that's uh, sure to add some sun throughout the week. Uh, John Calipari added some players. He returns a fantastic player, and they get a four-game test. This should be a lot of fun. What are you looking forward to? Yeah, loaded roster. Seeing how they mix, the talent is certainly there, and there's a big reason why they're thinking national championship. Yeah, so we got four games in five days, almost a week-long vacation for the likes of us. Work for John Calipari and his squad, starting with the Dominican Republic team. By the way, a national team that John Calipari once coached, and his assistant Orlando Antigua also coached. And then Thursday, 7 o'clock on the SEC Network, Monterey Tech from Mexico will be here. That's game number two, a day off Friday. Carlton comes down from Canada. That's 6 o'clock Eastern on the SEC Network. They've already played a loaded schedule, including a nice win against Florida State, or probably a loss against Florida State a few days ago. And we finish it with a noon start against the Bahamas team on Sunday to close the week. Now, Dane. We've got a bunch of good freshmen. We've got some returning players coming back from injury. And guys have been good and taking the game to another level. And oh, by the way, something no one else can say, Kentucky has the reigning national player of the year. And how rare is that? It's been since 2009. Tyler Hansborough of North Carolina, where the reigning national player of the year, has come back to the university. And here's Oscar Shibway, who was just an absolute beast last year, on the glass as a scorer. You name it, uh, he imposed his will on anybody and everybody. And as likable as he was on the court, he's even more likable off the court. The gentle giant is the heart and soul for the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, he rewrote the record book in a lot of different ways last year. He's the first in Kentucky history to be a consensus national player of the year, to get all six major national player of the year honors. Dane, the difference with Tyler Hansborough, who came back in 09, is his, his numbers took a step back. His team around him got better, and they ended up winning the national championship. John Calipari taking a passive role in this one. He'll be up there with Bruiser Flint and company uh, throughout the week, watching in his 14th season as Kentucky's head coach. If he can get Oscar Sheetwe and others involved to be a national championship contender, that would be the biggest payoff. The biggest thing I see right now is you and I have a better seat than John Calipari in this game. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the first time ever. Enjoy it while we can. He's going to delegate those responsibilities to Orlando Antigua. But you're right. I mean, Oscar Sheetwe is surrounded by some great talent, and him being a willing leader, I think, allows his team to mesh very quickly. Okay, so it's an opportunity for Orlando Antigua, second year back with the Kentucky program, now the associate coach and former head coach for the Dominican national team. I know you spent some time talking to him about that program, one he's very close to and proud of. Absolutely. I mean, he, he's got a number of players on the opposing team that he has become really close with, that he's coached at Illinois, and so a lot of familiarity there. This is a veteran team from the Dominican, originally on the schedule as an under-22 team, but that is not what they delivered. They You're allowed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Just right before tip, you had 25, 26 year olds? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. You might remember Justin Manaya played for Frank Martin in South Carolina. He'll be on the floor for him. Um, Andres Felice is 25 years old. He was a great point guard at Illinois, where Orlando Antigua helped recruit him. And so we're ready to go. This is also, it, it should be noted that John Calipari is going to run out a different starting five every half. This starting five, I think we would all consider to be the starting five for Kentucky if the season started right now, including a guy who was third in the nation in assists last year in Xavier Wheeler. <laughs> Damon Collins will jump center for Kentucky. I like the arch and the new uniforms in Dominican Republic. We'll start with possession. 
Andres Feliz is their point guard. Here's a look at the starting five for the Dominican Republic and then the Kentucky team. Brought to you by Getty's Pools. The first thing that stands out defensively for Kentucky is just the length and size. And you see Jacob Toppin out there who's becoming an even better defender. And everybody's been raving about his offseason. Kind of a six-man energy guy, but higher expectations this, this season. Trying to get the shot clock situated. What, what does this starting five, this group of five, bring for John Calipari's squad? Uh, I think you get the physicality, the length. You got to look around and say, do, do we have enough shooters out there if you're a Kentucky fan? But that's where Antonio Reeves, number 12, the transfer from Illinois State, that uh, him being a top 20 scorer in the NCAA last year would be more than happy to play that role. C.J. Frederick will see time at the two this week for Kentucky, and John Calipari's plan is that C.J. will start the second half, but he's going to be limited just a little bit. Adu Thierro is another Kentucky player who will be finding his minutes limited just a little bit throughout the course of this four-game tournament, but otherwise, everybody else is wide open. Kentucky's only loss now in their third trip to the Bahamas. They've only lost one game. That was to the Dominican national team on their first ever trip. Here's Xavier Wheeler. Nearly seven assists a game last year. Now Jacob Toppin with the pull-up jumper. And Oscar Shigwe pulls in the first miss. Go figure. Wheeler short on the three. Toppin inside, and he draws the foul. Well, just like old times, right? Oscar Shibwe, offensive rebound, creating another opportunity. And then Jacob Toppin, who's just been such an energy guy for this Kentucky team. You don't call a lot of plays for him. He just goes and makes plays. Zero and white. Had a great visit with Jacob this afternoon. You'll see it aired during halftime tomorrow. He spent time with a couple of different NBA teams back in May going through the pre-draft workouts. You said it was incredibly valuable to him. So you fly in the night before. You show up the next day. They do all the measurements and testing. And then you get out there and play. And it's usually with five or six other guys. Kentucky wants to have more tempo this year, Dane. They want to push it and really use the athleticism. Uh, the only way to get tempo is to get stops on the defensive end, and so that's where it begins and ends if Kentucky wants to control the tempo throughout this season. And a blocking foul goes against Kentucky. One thing that was really interesting, Tom, in shoot-around yesterday, Usually a coach gets mad at a team when they have short closeouts. But with Kentucky's length, he said, guys, a short closeout is okay. Give the guy a step. You can still contest the shot while not getting beat off the dribble. The ability to be a shot-blocking defensive team is what Jack Calipari is not only looking for, but he thinks they have great opportunity to do so. And he said, that's the difference when you get to the NCAA tournament with Final Four National Championship teams. Nice challenge three that goes down for Jessica Manaya. Played not only at South Carolina, but also at Providence to close his career. He's an interesting story. I'll talk about that in a moment. But he said, when you get to the tournament, you have to have guys who are stoppers and shot blockers. And it's not just the bigs that provide that for this Kentucky team. Ooh, beautiful pull up. Damian Collins. I haven't seen that out. Two dribbles to the left, pull up. Who can stop that? Wheeler picking up three-quarter court. A little bit of contact. But yeah, going to your point, when they studied their stats from years ago, or their most successful season, that, that's what stood out to them the most. They had the best rim protection on those teams, so it's become a priority for this roster. They have shot clock issues inside the building, so just leave it at zero until they can fix it. I I'm not sure the shot clock will be an issue for either one of these teams. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of mouths to feed out there on the offensive end. They'll do just fine. Collins starting at the four. Here's the first look. Antonio Reeves, and he drops it down. Transfer from Illinois State, who played his high school ball a couple spots, but mainly at Simeon in Chicago. Well, nice, quick decision 
Because when I watched his old clips from a year ago, I mean, he's a guy that really is kind of ball dominant, a volume shooter, but he's not going to be able to just bounce it 10 times in the possession in this type of offense with all his sound around him. Wheeler to Shibwe. That is a combination John Calipari is looking for. He's, we're going to be random at times offensively, but I need my one, that's his point guard, and my five, that's Oscar, to be connected. Well, you can forget about it with such a great floor general and Xavier Wheeler feeding the big man when you've got a pin down like that. It's game over. Here's Manaya trying to feed it inside his dad, the former general manager of the New York Mets. We had an interesting conversation with Justin earlier today. You asked him what the Dominican coach had said to the team in Spanish after the shoot-around, and he shrugged his shoulders. He said, you got me. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Yet he's playing for the Dominican select team. He said, I pick up on most of uh, some of the things we're trying to do offensively. But yeah, he got recruited to come down here. He's been playing with the, uh, the Hornets uh, over the summer league. And, and here he is representing the team. And he got his hand on that one as Wheeler tried to get it to Oscar. A little loose ball, Dominican team gets it, and here's Familia inside. Jose Familia, 6'8", and he's got a buck. Well, and that's one of two areas they really need Wheeler to be great at, is limiting the turnovers and taking opportunities when they're there, and when they're not, pull it out, set the table, if you will, for your team. Nearly seven assists a game last year for Xavier Wheeler, but three turnovers a game. And remember, that was a season that was inter interrupted by a couple of different injuries. So Oscar will get a seat along with Reeves and Collins in our first look at Cason Wallace, who will share backcourt with Severe Wheeler. He's a backup point guard, but he's a combo guy and will play off the ball some as he does here with Wheeler on the floor. Boy, 22 and white, Cason Wallace, it seems like everybody you talk to, he's the first name they bring up out of all these guys who are so good. It's just Wallace has really separated himself since arriving particularly on the defense end. Martinez left it short. And Manaya with the save. Here's for Lees. Wallace comes in with a reputation as an elite player and an elite defender. You don't always say that about freshmen. And Kentucky able to force the errant pass to the turnover, and that'll send us to a timeout, the reigning national player of the year. Oscar, Oscar Sheebway's got a couple. And his Kentucky team has started. Three for six from the floor. Wheeler to Shibley. You'll hear that a lot this season. Bar in the Bahamas where Kentucky has an early lead on the Dominican Republic. And this is a backcourt thing that would be interesting to watch with Casey Wallace and Xavier Wheeler sharing some time. Yeah, I mean, both those guys can play point guard, of course. Wallace could be a backup to Wheeler, but man, can they be dynamic if they're on the court together. Coach Cal mentioned John Wall, Eric Bledsoe type comparison. And we mentioned some of Wheeler's turnover issues, but I think that's gonna help him as well. I mean, anytime you can have a point guard playing with another point guard, they tend to make each other better, and that's what I expect from this backcourt. Freshman Chris Livingston with his first shot attempt. Moved by Feliz. Dominican Republic has only gotten off four shots. They've also turned it over four times. Here's Martinez. With the jumper. By Martinez. Heck of a job by the Dominican Republic of just handling that pressure out front, making the correct ball reversals. Good shot. Here's Wheeler down the lane. He's able to draw the foul. He just is so good at getting in the lane. He has been ever since he stepped foot into the SEC at Georgia. Even as teams sagged off him, daring him to shoot the ball, he still gets by it. He's just so quick and crafty. Ten points a game and third in the country in 6.9 assists a game. Had a wrist injury late in the season. Had a neck injury at one point. And, of course, Savir started his at the University of Georgia playing for Tom Crane. Led the conference in assists with seven and a half a game as a sophomore, and that set a Georgia school record. Wheeler knocks them both down. A little bit of pressure from Lance Ware playing 94 feet of defense. 
You know, and Lance Ware might have an opportunity. He's not the same type of player as Toppet, but in terms of bringing some of that energy off the bench and making a couple hustle plays, getting the team involved, the crowd involved, uh, I like his motor. There's Manai. You mentioned he was playing for Charlotte in the summer league. And so next for him, the same Dominican team will play in the tournament in Brazil. He's undecided whether or not he'll be on the roster for that one. Rebound by the freshman Livingston from Akron, Ohio. Here's Wallace. And that one rejected. He timed that well, did 31. I mean, he read that coming the entire way. Nice sidestep here, but didn't see that second off-ball defender. Give me that. That's a Perez in the block. Here's Adonis De La Rosa, brings some size to the floor for the Dominican. 7 258 played at Kent State, and then at Illinois, came in as a grad transfer when Orlando Antigua was on Brad Underwood's staff with the Illini. They've had some big bodies come through there, huh? Here's Toppin. That's going to be a good shot for him. They used that a lot last year, that ghost screen where he fakes the ball screen and slips to the side to be able to knock that down this season. Loose ball picked up. Then challenge at the rim. Ware picks up his first person. What do you think we stand? We think we're, we're sick with five personal fouls this week. Just kind of <laughs> easy come, easy go. If you're over 25 years old, I think you get an extra foul. You know. <laughs> Give it up for the big guys. Nice hustle there, just a loose ball. And you're going to see a little bit of sloppiness. It's August, and just tinkering with the lineups. Who plays well together? De La Rosa leads it short. Got another one coming his way. This is the second five for Kentucky. The holdovers with Wheeler and Toppin. Folks around this program raving about how Jacob Toppin has looked over the course of the offseason. And what I love about his story, you know, he transfers in from Rhode Island, was supposed to redshirt, but they needed him. And so he says, okay, no problem, I got you. And then last year, it's like, hey, you're not going to be a star for us. I need you to be the energy guy. He's like, I got you. Oh! <laughs> Plays like that. We saw that in the SEC tournament. 42 and a half inch vert, Woo! and a nice finish from the freshman Wallace run on the floor. I mean, that is sensational. You talk about athleticism and speed all over the court. For the blue and white. Ooh. Open three from Perez is an air ball. Wallace will let it go across the end line. John Calipari wants his guys to have fun, but he told him she'd run today. Come focus. Top Look at it. this effort. Topping is just going to. Sure. Getting all the way across there. What did he tell you? Is that uh, vertical is at around 42 inches? But he's like, yeah, I didn't feel like I stretched good yeah. enough, though. I think I got a couple more inches in me. He said, I'd like to get to 44. What? A 44 inch vertical for a guy who's 6'9, 205? Spent time working out with his brother and Paul George out in California before his draft workout, and Lance Ware goes above the rim. How many lob dunks have we seen under John Calipari? He was at Memphis and brought to Kentucky and just practiced it religiously and executed extremely well. Dominican has missed each of its last four field goal attempts. Here's Manaya. Got it to go. Second three for Manaya. Top and turns the corner. It was really interesting talking with Cal today. He talked about playing offense and, and playing random. He said, I, I want to play fast and with pace. And the way our offense is going to look is you can choose to go left or right, whatever you're going to do with the screen. There's no wrong answer. And I thought that was really interesting. If you have speed, it allows you to be a little bit more random, if you will, and, and be able to keep the defense on their heels and guessing. Now, the balance is when you have a set play call in a dead ball situation, you can't just go break off a play and call your own number. you got to get the ball to Sheepway or whoever the play is. Wallace at the shot clock buzz. That'll bring an end to this second. Kentucky with a 15 to 11 lead. Not all fun. There's been some heavy hearts around the Bluegrass as of late. When we return, we'll walk you through it as we 
And down here in the Bahamas, remember a Kentucky legend. Well, the beloved Mike Pratt lost his battle with cancer and passed away on June 16th. He was 73 years old. And UK Athletics Hall of Famer inducted in the Kentucky Sports Hall of Fame, the Ohio Basketball Hall of Fame in 2019. Second team All-American in 1970, two-time first team All-SEC, academic All-American. And, of course, Kentucky fans know that he spent so many years on the UK Sports Network with Tom Leach. Just devastating for him to pass away. And Dane, those who made such a fantastic tandem on the radio for years, and they had a memorial service for Mike last Friday at Memorial Gym with so many of his former teammates, friends, and family being able to speak. It's just heartbreaking that he's gone already. And it's, it's really been moving to see all the, the comments and the articles uh, about his life and how successful he was, but the humility, how humble, how approachable, and something that we should all strive to be. And, and man, is, is he a legend that will be sorely missed in this Kentucky family. Here's a freshman, Wallace, now running the point. Asa Wallace is from Richardson High School in Dallas. Projected lottery pick. What do you think he needs to show? Not necessarily this week. It is what it is. But what does Case and Wallace need to show over the course of the season to live up to those expectations? Well, his identity is on the defensive end, and that is not an insult to what he can do offensively. But just be that bulldog. I mean, I, I look at him and I think of the great nickname in the NBA right now, Davion, Davion Mitchell with off night. Because every time somebody goes up against them, they have an off night. I feel like Taysom Wallace can be that guy and the aggressor. What I loved about him in shoot around was he had a bass to his voice. I mean, he communicated like a veteran, loud, deep voice, not shy or bashful whatsoever. Really jump ball. They'll come back the other way. He's doing a great job on Jason Coloma right now, who averages 24 points a game in the Dominican Pro League. And here's another freshman, Chris Livingston. Yeah, they got plenty of talent and guys that seem to be playing well together early on. And look, iron sharp, sharpens iron. So uh, these guys are going to hold each other accountable just by the sheer talent and the options that Coach Cal has to choose from. Loose ball. And Santana has it blocked. Another big Kentucky rejection. It was Damian Collins with the spring that time. Here's Shibway back in the game. Big O left it short. He's had a busy couple of days. Very profitable. Colome with the finger roll. Unsuccessful trip there for Kentucky on the other end of the court. But you love to see Collins gets the block on one end, hustles down for the offensive rebound. That's the energy you want to see out of your big man. Jason Colome has been quiet for a good chunk of the night, especially when he had Casey Wallace guarding him. There's a mismatch that DR would love to have. Livingston the board. So we got Oscar Shiwe back on the floor. What is the next step for Oscar's game? There's been a lot of attention about how he's worked on his three-point shot. And if I'm a Kentucky fan, I see him step out and shoot a three. If he misses a couple, look, it's not just about him developing his own game or getting ready for the NBA. It can truly benefit this Kentucky team just on the spacing. If he can be a threat out there, because that's the one question mark I see on this Kentucky team offensively is can they make defenses respect them on the perimeter? And if you can get your big guys to draw that attention out, it's just going to open up those driving lanes. Kick out. Ended up in an Antonio Reeves three. Shot 39% from deep for Illinois State last year. Came on a feed from Shiva. He seemed really coachable in practice. I think his offense is further along than his defense just because of all the new principles that they're teaching right now. But, man, he's a quick study. Yes, sir, no, sir. Gets it right on the second opportunity in those defensive drills. Reeves, number 12 for Kentucky, was second team all Missouri Valley Conference. His stint at Illinois State ended 
fourth in school history in single season points. You said he was kind of a shoot first ball dominant player in the film that you were able to watch? Well, he does a lot off the bounce, and I think that's good. He's not just a catch and stick guy, but he's not going to have the luxury of like just having ISOs and just dribbling and, and sizing his guy up. I mean, this offense is, is about not letting it stick in quick decisions. Dominican got late in that shot clock. Here's Collins. Drive. Oh, my oh, God! Wow. From outside the lane! Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Can you be number one on Sports Center in a preseason exhibition game? I say yes, Damian Collins. No fly zone. Stay on my airspace. Number four. Get him. Make Dane Bradshaw's voice crack. <laughs> You've done it right. You know, he missed a lob dunk in practice yesterday. And Coach Kyle said, Damian, no missed dunks. He said, Coach, I hit my head. He's like, what do you mean hit your head? I hit my head on the rim. He's like, okay, well, I guess that's an excuse. You see why. He's got a 42-inch vertical and a 6'7 wingspan, and he helps on that three-point play put the cats up double figures. That was outside the lane where he took off, nearly outside the international lane. That's one of those where you see what he's trying to do, but you're like, no way, he's going to have to just throw it at the goal. Yeah. And sure enough, he got there. Collins helps out up the screen, and it's stolen away by Reeves up top. Colome trying to help him up, almost undercut him, and Reeves will get back to his feet. So we'll take a timeout here at Baja Mar. It's a 10-point lead for John Calipari's Wildcats. No yawning allowed. Continue from the Bahamas right after this. All right, well, if you're looking for a spectacular play here to start this run, this is it. Damian Collins extends and comes away with the stuff. Just goes on his pogo stick, elevates. <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> Go. And after that, he was telling him, run. I think he was telling him, see what happens when y'all run the court, That's get right. the advanced passes, let their speed and athleticism take over. Catch shooting 42% from the floor. They've made a couple of threes. Wow, it's a nifty move by a guy that Orlando Antigua knows well. Axel Lindeborg. Yeah, that kid can play. He's a star at the JUCO level, 19 years old. This is a little bit of an audition for him. And Orlando knows the family well, huh? Reeves for three. And he's got his third. He played with his father on the Dominican national team years ago. All three threes for the Cats have come from transfer Antonio Reeves. I love the confidence he's shooting the ball with. My concern for him was, you know, would he be, you know, so confused defensively that it might hurt his offensive game? But right now, he's just letting it fly. There he is again. Nice dish, Ware will rock it. A couple of dunks for Lance Ware. So Reeves started his and finished his high school career at Simeon in Chicago, where Derrick Rose played, among other greats. Collins reverses it in, of course, before Rose went on to play for Cal and Memphis. Top it! A foul from behind and went down hard. Now that was an aggressive line as well. Cats getting above the rim then. Uh, the, the speed at which they are attacking the rim and then a beautiful one-hand rebound. Nice dish, Lance Ware taking the rim off. And, you know, in broadcasting, they tell us to lay out, especially when the crowd gets loud. Yeah. I didn't anticipate that opportunity in the Bahamas, but here's Big Blue Nation <laughs> essentially selling out the bleachers in the ballroom here, getting on their feet. All right, this will put Toppin at the free throw line.
Game number two is tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern. Monterey Tech is uh, in the building. That will probably get some scouts in here watching it tonight. They'll be on the SEC Network. And all of these available on the ESPN app. Toppin has knocked down all four of his free throws. He's playing some confident basketball for this Kentucky team. What do you think about Kentucky's defensive effort tonight? Uh, good, not great. I, I think their energy and effort is good. They, they've had some miscommunication and given up some angles. There's Brian Martinez with the bucket. Here's Xavier Wheeler. How important is the mid-range to Wheeler's game? Uh, I think it's key because teams know how good he is at getting to the basket. What you saw there was his body floated a little bit as opposed to going straight up and down the way Coach Kyle's asked him to do. Ware steps through. And Colome lost it. By the way, Big Blue Nation represented well by uh, not only the fans, but also the officials here all from the Commonwealth, the Hampton brothers, John and Brent, Friday, Cynthia, Kyle Bottoms, late addition to make the trip from Danville. I wonder how the Dominican Republic feels about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom Leach is telling me a story that a few years ago, one of the coaches started yelling and said, you're working for them. And they said, well, yeah, <laughs> we, we are. <laughs> the first look at C.J. Frederick just checked in the game. He's Wearing a leg sleeve on that left leg. Talk about great shooters. He was a top returning shooter from behind the arc coming out of Iowa before injuries derailed his season, really before it could get started last year. Stolen away. Here's Piero. First touch ends up with a jam. I do Piero play limited minutes along with CJ Frederick. And well, that's how you make an impact. Well, a highlight play, but uh, a low light in terms of potential injury. Wheeler really got clipped on that ball screen on that defensive possession. He has hobbled off. It looks like, don't want to presume, but just before that, the arrow's going to get the dunk, but you might see in the back, Wheeler is going to hobble off to the bench. Like he might have taken a knee to the inner side there, hopefully just a Charlie horse bone or, or bruise. Oh, that athletic training staff looking at Wheeler. Wallace will take over. That point guard and that ball out of bounds in the return of Big O, Oscar Shibway. So many accolades for Oscar, obviously from an award standpoint last year. And statistically, it's just almost mind-bending what he was able to do. The first in a power five to put the, up his uh, point and rebounds average, six, better than 16 and 15. Since Bill Walton did it for UCLA. You, you just kept waiting for those averages to go down. And then all of a sudden, he'd have a 30-20 game. And then 2018, and it just all throughout the game, he just dominated the glass. So efficient. Hey. Got a rough arena record with a 28-rebound performance against Western Kentucky. Great article by Kyle Tucker in The Athletic talking about what Oscar is doing, really using this as a work trip in many ways, and working with the folks from Influxer for his NIL deal. He's doing $500,000 worth of business, according to Kyle's article, just this week alone. I mean, can they not extend the trip a week? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it, he, he's working, and uh, it, Coach Kyle said, look, our team understands that he's got a rare opportunity here, given his visa status, that he's not able to do as much in the U.S., yep. or at least not in the same sort of fashion. A student visa, and so that limits the income opportunities even from an NIL standpoint, but federally to be here on a student visa, so getting it done while out of the country. I was running some numbers today. This is how much things have changed. It is thought in that article that he's going to pull in about $2.75 million in NIL endorsement money right now. You go back just a few years ago, he would have been in the top 20 highest paid people in college basketball, including head coaches. <laughs> he would have come in 19th on the list just a few years ago when it comes to college head coach income. Now, that has changed just a little bit, but he's also 
not but, done with his NIL money and, either. And I understand, you know, regardless what people think about NIL, I mean, he has made himself so marketable. I mean, he, he not only his production on the court, but his attitude off the court, how he treats people, what he represents, how he's trying to uh, give back in the community. And so it's not just because he's a star at Kentucky. It's because of all the other things that he represents. Well, and he can do that, too. Not only uh, does he have his own foundation, but he's able to build his mom a house back in the condo. He you know, went back, hadn't been back for a while. The kids in the neighborhood welcoming him as the American. I recommend Kyle Tucker's reading the athletic. Absolutely. Fantastic. Terrific Here's article. Nice breakaway and a finish by Kaysen Wallace. I'd say he'll have an article coming soon about Kaysen Wallace as well. I mean, this guy just brings so much energy to this team and loves the defensive side. Look at that. I mean, that's not a freshman in August type of play to be able to die, whip your head, get the deflection, and then slowly bring it up the court when you don't have numbers. Very mature. Wallace McDonald's All-American, a five-star recruit. Jordan Brand game as well. And an offensive foul committed by Adu Pierre. By the way, Kentucky's adding another day when they get back to the Commonwealth. Donna Onyimso at 6'11 will join them. By the way, this guy can get up and can finish. Kentucky's Kaysen Wallace, a name you need to learn going forward. It's a catch by 15. Bar Resort and Big Blue Nation taking advantage of being here this week. How about our flight? That was packed with Kentucky fans coming down here. And they got four games over a five-day period, including Saturday's game. A little bit earlier, 6 o'clock Eastern, the Carleton University team. And some big wins in their program history in these exhibitions. And they dominate uh, their local conference. Florida State. They, they, I looked at the box where they love to shoot threes. They put up a ton of them against Leonard Hamilton's squad. Well, I'm not going to let you change the subject because I was going to go back to the flight, and I bet you wouldn't have treated a Kentucky fan the way you did me in terms of sharing a cab. No. The veteran move by Tom. Hey, can you drop me off at the golf course before the hotel, and then I'm left with the left with the cab. Well, I thought it was very nice the of fair, you to, to offer to wait. No, I'm okay sharing. I just thought, you know, it's just a, it, there's, there's not an Uber situation down here. Like, we couldn't split the fare, and you took advantage of that, knowing that. Hey, I had a golf match to get to with Tom Leach and Goose Gibbons, so the fact that you're willing to drop me off before you. Yeah, fair enough. The fact that I don't play golf came back to haunt me. Yeah. Incredible course here, Bahamar. Here's Wallace, a little blind look. Shibway lost the handle on it. Arrow kept it alive, and they're going down like bowling pins. Colombe had it blocked. Man, you can't do that on Jacob Toppin. Tim Coleman came off the bench to show his enthusiasm. Orlando and Tig was going to get a timeout. It's just absolutely unbelievable how high Toppin gets. And, you know, it's not just about athleticism. You know, this is about timing, instinct, getting your steps right, getting a feel for how quickly the def uh, the opponents going at the rim and just an outstanding play i mean they're now coach kyle wanted more rim protection seven blocks in this first half already well, this is a team that offers a lot of promise when you look back at some of the trips that kentucky has made down here to the bahamas not only how they've done but what then the next season turned into. We take you back eight years ago. It was a very aggressive schedule put together by Cal the first time they came down six games in eight days. Alex Poitras, Carl Anthony Towns, Tyler Eulis, and the Harrison Twins. And oh, by the way, that season got up to a really good start as well once they got back stateside. And in 2018, came back to the Bahamas four games in five days with there's a coming out party for Tyler Hero, P.J. Washington, and Nick Richards. Ware with the fadeaway, tough angle. Lance Ware had a pretty good trip. He's kind of 
filling out his passport these days. Played three games in Brazil. Built his self-confidence. He's going 30 points a game with the team that went to Brazil. Here's Manaya. Chris Livingston had a Oak Hill before starting his career at Akron. He's a big LeBron fan. He's been my manager. That's Wallace again. Good body control there. I mean, just getting in the lane, knowing that the defense was going to step up. Put up the little floater. No charge. But Wallace's defense on what they expect to be their leading scorer, Colombe. There he is, just doing what the scouting report says. Ice that ball screen, which means don't let the ball handler get to the screen. Nice job of doing that. Shot clock winding down. Belize leaves it short. Freshman Livingston will push it ahead. Here's where he's got Collins. And able to use his length to get it there. So they want to get it and go. And I'm not saying that they've got multiple point guards on the court all the time, but they have multiple guys that can push it on the fast break. You don't have to waste time getting the rebound looking for your primary ball handler. Get it and go. It's a Kentucky team that was 150th in the country in tempo last year. Even though they were an elite team from an offensive rating standpoint, Ken Palm had them fifth best in the country in offensive adjusted efficiency. But the promise is that they're really going to get up and go. And if Chris Livingston can do that, he'll be on the floor a ton. That just makes life easier for all the penetrators on the team when you can spread that defense out. Going back to a year ago, they had so many of those pieces just banged up. Helen Grady, of course, was hurt towards the end of the year. Clock winding down, familiar with the turnaround. They'll get a late bucket for the Dominican. A 43, a 25 lead for Kentucky at the half. That's include, includes seven blocks for John Calipari's squad. And defensively, they're getting the job done without a doubt. We've got plenty of coverage to come from here at Baja Bar. We'll welcome the president of Baja Bar, Graham Davis, when we return. And we'll take another look at what this Kentucky team has established here through one half of play. Drake's Big Blue Bahamas rolls on from Baja Bar Resort. Welcome back to Drake's Big Blue Bahamas from the fantastic Baja Bar Resort. Dane, what is this, fire on the water? Yep, that would be fire on the water. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you saw last night you when you came back? Yeah. It was a little blurry. Couldn't really <laughs> tell what it was, Tom. <laughs> Thought somebody was messing with me. Gerard and Cones adjusted. Vulnerable state. John Calipari's team with a great defensive effort in the second half. And from a Havoc standpoint, they're certainly doing that. Seven blocks for Kentucky. Uh, by the way, update from Kentucky Sports Information Staff. You saw Xavier Wheeler injured in the first half. He is good to return in the second half. But um, John Calipari, as planned, will start a different starting five to start the second half and he's going to share some minutes that way going forward just about every game we'll see some more cj frederick and with this five case and wallace is going to be running point especially for these new guys it's a test to can you start the second half with the same intensity that you did the first half and typically when you're away from your bench sometimes your communication and effort on defense can slack a little bit because you don't have the bench talking to you. Dominican shot 34% in the first half. Kentucky at 48%. Cats nailed four threes. Most of those coming from Reeves. He went three of four from behind the arc. And there's a good start to this one. And Livingston gets it in. What a nice job. He's looking for his trailer three-point shooter, Frederick, and then he ran to the three-point line in the corner. Nice give and go there from the two wings. Product back in Ohio. LeBron is his mentor. And by the way, he's a future movie star. Universal Studios has a basketball movie coming out, Shooting Stars. He's in it. How cool is that? Yeah. 
contested three off the mark. Oh, nice. Here's where. Are you kidding me? Let me sit pushing it up the break. The left hand, one hand bounce pass. Good shot off the side of the backboard. Kentucky trying to push it again. Here's Collins. Oh, and he did it again! It's like a repeat of the first half. And he can't help but smile going down the court. I tried to tell these boys, don't jump, get out of the way. You better make a business decision when four comes at you. More useful to wearing a swim cap. Here's Frederick with a shovel ahead. Now Wallace, two-hand jam. Uh, the Kentucky fans who showed up here in the Bahamas are getting a show tonight, especially here in the second half. Damian Collins in his second year getting the fans at their feet. Wallace in his first doing the same. Yeah, here's Lance Ware first with the run and slam. And then where's he going to take off here? How about right there above the block and get out of my way? Collins for the second time. Game set. Here at beautiful Bahama Resort, Kentucky has doubled up on the DR, 52 to 25. Got some stars in the building. How about DeAndre Ayton, center for the Suns, the Bahamas native? He's the only person in the building that might have been able to contest Damian Collins' dunk. <laughs> but how about Ayton? Congrats to him. Just signed four year, 133 million. That's Oscar Sheboy money. Sitting on the, Dominic, uh, the Dominican side instead of the Kentucky side. I guess it, Kentucky high dollar seats are taken. <laughs> They've got enough NBA players on that side of the court. Yeah. And I'm really impressed. I know there are a lot of highlights in this game starting to get away from the Dominican Republic, but I mentioned the intensity to start the second half, and that's starting five. I mean, they really set the tone, getting some stops, getting out and going, and not playing the scoreboard. Something Coach cal has got to be thrilled with. And a foul on the inbounds, an illegal screen. John Calipari spent a lot of time on ball screen defense today, which is not uncommon, obviously, right? During the course of a season, you're going to have different ways you're going to defend it. But he was trying to teach his guys that the Dominican is going to do some things a little bit differently, and the international style can certainly be different from a ball screen standpoint. Yeah, and I thought one of the things on the defensive side, too, to piggyback on that was, oh, hey, just a crash. We've had some big contests at the rim. Perez flying in and just athletes falling hard. But you know, this is a team, and especially on the international side, you, you deal with a lot of back cuts. And so in basketball, you're typically stopped, taught to stay between man and ball, man and ball. Coach Cal said, no, 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 on these back cuts, you have to stay between man and basket. Make them run through your chest. And to my knowledge, we've yet to see Kentucky get backdoored at all in this game. Kentucky by 27 biggins right now. And Dominican Republic going to the free throw line. Castle Perez throws the first one home. Marty McGee set for the couch football season. Annual sit downs with every SEC head coach. East coach is coming your way Monday, 7 30 Eastern. And Tuesday, he'll talk with the coaches in the West. Talking season starts at 7 30 Eastern, 6 30 Central, both nights, and here on the SEC network. Here's C.J. Frederick for three. And Collins with the rebound. Anxious to see what a healthy C.J. Frederick can do for this Kentucky team. Yeah, and they're certainly limiting his minutes right now. He's feeling good. I talked to him before the game after he just put on a shooting clinic out here in warm-ups. But something they got to watch really throughout the season. I mean, he, he's, he's had a tough uh, stretch with injuries. Going back to when he first started in college and just whether it was plantar fasciitis or the, the hamstring issue last year. But they're going to need him down the stretch, so they're going to have to 
limit those minutes throughout the season. Wallace strokes one hole. When I say limit, I mean, look, you get 20 minutes or more on a roster like this, <laughs> you got to feel pretty good about your playing time. Yes, yeah. this, this thing is loaded. Frederick shot 47% from behind the arc while playing at Iowa. Here's Wallace. He rolls it home. There's just such a great pace to his game. He never gets sped up. Good decision making. He's a musician. Plays the saxophone, plays the piano. Play any instruments? No, I don't even play golf. You pick <laughs> up an instrument. <laughs> Try my best. <laughs> That five that started the half will now get a break. Fresh five in for Kentucky. I, I don't think this is going to be a platoon system once we get to the regular season. But he's, to your point, John Calipari's got plenty of depth. Yeah, and the versatility. And I think one of the keys to the versatility is this guy right here, top. I mean, he can play the, the two, the three for you, and the four, which are all interchangeable. But when you play him at the four, now all of a sudden the other team's four, in most cases, is not nearly as athletic, doesn't have the speed. <laughs> There's a shot block by Tyson. 61-29, Kentucky with the advantage and the catch getting it done. That is uh, another eighth block of the game here in the beautiful Bahamas. Really odd the way it all played out and he was definitely coming back and he wasn't coming back. but. This is one of those scenarios where you look at John Calipari's draft situation, and it's easy to see that there's more talent on this roster than talent that departed, and you don't say that very often about his teams. No, I mean, they've got the veteran leadership. They've got the guys returning. And after the heartbreak in the NCAA tournament, you want your team to remember that pain, and it's hard to have that when you have a completely new roster. That's not the case this year with Kentucky. I mean, you've got some veterans that are on a little bit of a revenge tour with some new complimentary pieces, which is an understatement with some of the talent that they've added. Sheba able to challenge that one. Wallace so, pushes it ahead. I just feel like you know, this team, they, they have more depth, and, and they're, they're less fragile than they were a year ago. I mean, when Wheeler went out a little bit, when Ty Ty Washington, they had all the pieces and shooters, playmakers, point guard, but when they didn't have that health on their side, there wasn't any type of depth or backup situation. We talk about Oscar Shibwe coming back, the first consensus national player of the year to return since Tyler Hansborough. And looking back to what that North Carolina team became in Hansborough's senior year, Tyler Hansborough was still Tyler Hansborough. The guys around him got a lot better. Ty Lawson was the number one offensive rated player in the country, according to the Ken Palm numbers. And that was the difference in North Carolina playing for a national championship versus winning it when they knocked off Michigan State to win the national championship. Tyler Hansborough's numbers might not have been as good as the previous year, but Psycho T still dominated that paint. Gentle O might not be really appropriate because he's such a beast, but yeah. he is such a gentle giant. I mean, he always have a smile on his face, does Oscar. Well, this is one nice of the easiest superstars to root for. Shibwe fighting for the rebound, and Dominican comes down with it. Castillo had the last bucket, will bring it up. We'll see when the other teams come through what we can expect from them. The Canadian team on its own is going to be much younger than this Dominican team. That's a, a real college team, but this is a bunch of 22 to 25 year olds out there. That, that one youngster that you're talking about earlier, but from a physicality standpoint, it's probably the biggest test for Kentucky this week. And with Castillo taking over, and Orlando Antigua will use a timeout. Just get worn out if you're the opponent with this type of pace. 
So Oscar Shibwe returning after being a consensus national player of the year last year. Mentioned this a moment ago, but the comp is uh, Tyler Hansborough. And Hansborough in his player of the year year, 2008, North Carolina made it to the Final Four, averaged nearly 23 and 10. Oscar's 17 and 15. Very similar players, right, in terms of what they did on the interior? Yeah, I think there's some, and I, I had the benefit of playing against Tyler Hansborough, and uh, I wouldn't stand a chance against Shebway just like I did it against Hansborough. But, you know, back then, a little bit more of a post-up post, post -up game. I mean, Hansborough, like Shebway, had such great hands and the ability to finish in traffic under control and the footwork. But there are just not as many traditional post-up plays now in this free-flowing type offense uh, that has, you know, the game has evolved into over the past 15 years. Well, Tyler Hansborough was the guy that finally stepped out behind the arc and shot a few of those his senior year. Maybe we'll see that from Shibwe. First Power 5 player to average more than 16 and 15 a game since Bill Walton in the 72-73 season. Before Hansborough, the only other college player to return after winning all six major player of the year honors was Ralph Sampson. And he pulled down 38% of Kentucky's rebounds. Just an amazing number. Kentucky as a team pulled down 40 rebounds a game. Had a rebounding advantage of nearly 10 a game that led the country and of course Mostly thanks to Shibwe. Reeves dishes. Shibwe finishes. Great timing there. Good job breaking the press and keeping that spacing for the lob. Toppin got beat on that one. Couldn't recover in time. It's a first on Jacob Toppin. Shibwe's going to get the dunk here in the highlight, of course, but I, I just really like the way Reeves has played in this game. I, I, you know, he shot the ball extremely well that time. He's a guy that can obviously bring it up against pressure, make the right lob play while going full speed where most guys might get out of control or try to do it themselves. So pleasantly surprised at how well and under control Reeves has been playing mentioned that he played at Simeon in Chicago. He also spent a year playing at Shadow Mountain High School in Phoenix where he played a longtime NBA player Mike Bibby. And they're playing with a bunch of other Division One recruits on that roster before he went back to Simeon. His dad Big Tone was the freshman coach that year at Shadow Mountain. Well, that's the guy look he he shot at nearly 40 percent from three last year over 80 percent from the free throw line and so th that's another thing is that the charity stripe has to be good to Kentucky they've got to be able to attack on the inside and not shy away from contact because they lack confidence at the free throw line I mean the more confident you are from the strike the harder you go at the rim so here a little long in that one with the shot clock getting late Oscar pulls it down Oscar Shibwe will rebound every miss, then he'll drive you to church on Sunday. <laughs> well, willing passers are these big men. We've seen a couple times now where uh, in the first half, Collins got an offensive rebound, found Lance Ware that time. Shibwe gets it to Collins. Well, here's what Kentucky's been up to this summer. How about the telethon? at Rupp Arena with the open practice. $3.6 million so far raised for Kentucky flood victims in the 606. And on that night with Mark Few on the phone, they announced they'll start a home and home series with Gonzaga. Cats will travel to Spokane in November. And then Mark Few squad will come back and play at Rupp the next year. Well, Don Yinso is the latest assignment with Kentucky, he reclassified. He'll join the team when they get back to the Commonwealth. Yeah, Even the more that's where you look at this roster and you say, you know, wait, there's more? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Just the depth on the front line there and the rim protection that they're going to continue to have and, and have even more of when Onyenso gets involved. 
summer started with Cal making a statewide tour visiting five cities to raise money for tornado victims. By the way, and on that statewide tour, after the passing of great Joe B. Hall, Cal took a program around with him, just like Joe B. used to carry it on the sideline and had fans of Big Blue Nation sign it. And this is going to be a new tradition. Brought it out even though he wasn't on the sideline coaching this one. And fans will have more opportunities to sign it going through. It's a really cool moment and a reminder, not just a tribute to Joby Hall, but a tribute to all the fans of this Kentucky program and what it means statewide to have them be a part of it and practically, at least from a signature standpoint, be on the sideline every night. Absolutely. And Coach Kyle has always gotten it, you know, when it in terms of the responsibility that comes with being the head coach at Kentucky and getting back out on the road engaging with the fan base I know they love to see that home and home series with Gonzaga but Mark few was uh, was kind of cheer she played for three few was kind of chill wasn't he he's like hey, I've done some fishing today I'm sitting out in front of the water yeah you want to play sure we'll play uh, and I, you know look I think it does as much for Gonzaga than it does for Kentucky. It's exciting, but you know Kentucky has the SEC gauntlet to go into, and, and they already have such a tough non-conference. Not that Gonzaga doesn't, but Kentucky's got to be sitting there looking at, well, we got January, February, early March to deal with too, and this team seems more than capable of handling their business non-conference and in-conference, putting on a show right now in the Bahamas. Well, just about a week ago, John Calipari's players hosted an open practice inside Rupp Arena in conjunction with a telethon hosted by Joe and Kelly Kraft, Lex 18, and the American Red Cross for Kentucky flood relief. The three-hour open practice session with players manning the phones and practice on the court. And they raised now over $3.5 million, nearly $3.6 million, thanks to that. $2.5 million that night what a fantastic job by the players who led this and you can see those t-shirts are part of the fundraising going on we want to remind you that of course thousands have been affected by the flooding in eastern kentucky it's simply devastating the effects that those floodwaters have left throughout the 606 you can help please visit redcross.org slash kentucky to help the red cross respond and help people recover from this disaster i don't know that there's another state in our country that does a better job of pulling together when something bad a natural disaster hits whether it was the tornadoes on the western side of the state or the flooding in eastern kentucky and it speaks of who kentuckians are yeah and what a great lesson for these young men out here we touched on before how coach calipari really gets the responsibility that comes with being the head coach these young guys got to see the influence and impact that they can have as leaders in their community by wearing the blue and white. Raymond Mercedes hit the free throw line, has another free throw coming his way. Nice form, knocks them both down. Tom, I'm not sure how good of shooters are on this Dominican Republic team, but I guarantee you they're collectively better than two for 13 from three. But that's what this Kentucky team has held them to. Again, because of that great length and ball pressure they can have with this athleticism and size, yet still not get beat off the dribble. And if they do, they are beating you at the rim. Dominican Republic doing a good job at the free throw line, 8 of 10, but the Cats haven't missed a free throw. They're perfect 9 for 9. And they have hit 7 of 19 from deep to this point. John Calipari's promised a more up-tempo team. He scored 79.4 points a game last year, 26-8 season that ended far too early for the Kentucky fans with a first-round exit. But again, the only way you can get that tempo, whoo, one way to finish above the rim, is getting stops. If you're taking the ball out of the net after every possession, you just aren't going to get the offensive production you want. We saw that in the SEC last year with Alabama. NATO's offense that's known for high scoring, ton of threes. 
they could not get stops on the defensive end, and it truly hurt their offense all season long. Good hands by Xavier Wheeler. Nine upperclassmen last year, most in the Cal era. In the 20. 11 25 plus win season under Nacal, tied for second in the league with Tennessee. No issues at home, undefeated, 18 and 0. For that loss to St. Peter's. Plus on the road at LSU, Auburn, Tennessee, and Arkansas. Then I thought the league as a whole had an almost unbelievable regular season with so many teams having great years. It wasn't just Kentucky that had a target on their backs. I mean, when Auburn went on the road, they did. And with the way Nate Oates' program is elevated, everybody wanted to beat Alabama, Tennessee, of course, and then Arkansas, who for the second year in a row was the last team standing representing the SEC. And they've loaded up again. I mean, a really an overhaul with that roster, losing J.D. Note, Jalen Williams, they got a young buck man, Nick Smith, seems to be the real deal. So it's not just Kentucky that brings in some star freshmen nowadays. The rest of the SEC is doing their best to keep up. So the two teams in those standings at Sandwich, Kentucky and Tennessee, Auburn and Arkansas, you mentioned the talent that they're bringing in. But boy, they lost a lot, didn't they? I mean, especially starting with Bruce Pearl's team, who just finished up their international tour over in Israel. Uh, and I know I mentioned it earlier, but uh, to me, like it's just so important that you have some holdovers from the roster when you had the heartbreak against a team like St. Peter's. That these guys up. know what it's Whoa! like. <laughs> what was that? Take him top of the 360. Forced it in. Wheeler with the steal. Top and stayed away out in the wings. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to follow you to try and get a lot of you. Just take it yourself. Yeah, and he's just laughing on the way back. Like, uh, you know, I really didn't execute that 360 the way I wanted to perfectly, but still got it done. And here he is. Checks the defender, starts to turn. <laughs> just figures out where he is in the air. Man, this kid is something special. You missed it earlier when I was talking to him after shoot around today. I said, well, what were your measurements when you went through the draft workout? And he said, yeah, they had my vertical at 42, 42 and a half. But I really feel like I can get it to 44. Does it even matter at that point? I, I mean, yeah. There's, there's not, I've not seen a part in his game where I go, you know what? You could have done this with a little bit higher vertical. CJ Frederick returning. As I look at this team, I, I know it's like our first look at them. They've got inferior opponent. But if you didn't have the roster in front of you, you'd be hard pressed to say, hey, tell me who the freshmen are on this team. I mean, they, they've all played extremely poised together, hard and unselfish. Lance Ware trying to take it himself. A little bit of a questionable decision on that one. Reminds me of that white belt you got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you mentioned a top freshman, and here it is according to ESPN. Nick Smith coming into Arkansas. Brandon Miller at Alabama. Two on this list here, Kentucky. Chris Livingston and Kaysen Wallace. Enjoyed getting to see some of Chance Westry as Auburn had their foreign tour in Israel. Really smooth wing that can do a lot of things for them as a combo guard. Offensive rebound for the Dominican. Ware picks up the foul. 9.28 to play this with the first of four here at the beautiful Bahama Resort this week. And Yaxel Lindenborg will go to the free throw line. You mentioned earlier that this is 
Kind of an opportunity for him as a showcase. As Shibwe returns, and top and aware, head back to the bench. What is it about Lindenborg and this opportunity in front of him? It's difficult because of of the opponent, and there's just no matchup that favors you. And this is a team that really got put together for this game. I mean, this is not a group, you know, collectively that's played together a ton. We mentioned Jessica Benaya kind of flew in just to help play in this particular game. I was fascinated that Justin Benaya doesn't speak Spanish. He said, well, hold on a second, your dad is fluent. And he said, yeah, but mom never spoke it. We didn't speak it at home. And He's got a coach who directed the team in Spanish today and wasn't 100% sure of what they were communicating. That's Collins with the jump. Well, however you say that boy bad in Spanish is what they're saying about Collins because as impressive as his dunks are, it's been the one, two dribble pull-ups that we've seen show just that versatility oh, that I hadn't seen before. Thought it was funny when when Oscar Shibwe checked into the game. Uh, Lance Ware and Toppin were getting a big applause, but I felt like Shibwe just out of human nature was about to turn and start waving, you know, <laughs> just assuming it was for him. I do Fierro, freshman from Eastdale, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, knocks down a three. It was a last-minute addition to this class. He, really interesting story. The kid's still growing. He's he's sprouted another three inches since he showed up on campus. He's six six now, and you don't usually hear of a lot of guys that are kind of that low in the recruiting rankings end up at Kentucky. But that's where he is. He was five nine as a high school freshman, six five when he was state player of the year his senior year. He's added more to that now, and they say his growth plates are wide open. Well, I mean, the kid was unranked when he got an offer from Kentucky. I mean, how, how rare is that? You know what but happened? But his dad played for Coach Cal at Memphis, 0-2 to 0-5, and just like they trusted what they saw and knew he was going to keep getting better. There are a bunch of other coaches out there, and once Kentucky offered the arrow, they all turned to their assistants and said, wait, how come you haven't brought this kid to me? What? Kentucky's <laughs> offered him, yeah, and we right. haven't? Oscar point blank. Yeah, nice play there. Just a quick decision. I mean, we have not seen the ball stop too much. A lot of coaches say, don't let it stick. And that time, the arrow puts it on the deck right away, penetrate, finds the big man. Frederick finds the long rebound. Collins wanted it out front. Shibwe with the gift. Critics of NIL will ask the question. It's, it's easily answered. Well, how do you have balance in a locker room if one guy's making a lot of money? And the answer is simply, well, how do they find it in the NFL or the NBA or any of the professional sports? Guys get paid different, quarterbacks get paid more. Oscar Shibuya is going to be fascinating in this regard. It, Kyle Tucker's article reports that he's made over $2.75 million in NIL already, right? Well, that in a lot of places, it's going to lead to jealousy. Not with this guy. He's, he's so likable, but whether there's money involved or not, I mean, jealousy and egos is something coaches have been having to manage the arrow. since the beginning of time. And so that can be who's on the billboard, who's on the, back in my day, it was who's on the cover of the media guy. Like, those things can create some jealousy within a locker room on its own. 
I can, so that stuff I know exists you're well before money. I know you're still in pain. You weren't on the cover of the media <laughs> guide, were you? Eventually, when you're a senior, they're like, all right, throw him a bone. <laughs> Nobody reads this thing, but his parents are going to love it. Kentucky playing above the rim. How about this newest addition, Adu Fierro? The uh, kid keeps growing. He may have grown an inch since half court. He keeps flying. Some great plays right now. By three. Catch up on the Dominican Republic, 90 to 50. Big Blue Nation has shown up in the Bahamas, and uh, they might need to buy a, a roster. We got some coaches changes finally in the SEC, and not just in one or two places. Dane, we got to learn some new names. Mike White made the move from Florida to Georgia, uh, but otherwise, a bunch of guys new to the league. Yeah, the, the interconference transfer rule <laughs> looks like it took effect with Mike White there. Strange to see his name next to a. Georgia logo, but some great additions. Uh, uh, where do you begin? I, I think Chris Jans is a great fit. Just yeah, and they've got Tolu Smith coming back at Mississippi State. He did a lot of good things at New Mexico State. And Dennis Gates with a quick turnaround the way they in year two got to the NCAA tournament at Cleveland State. And uh, of course, Todd Golden getting his big opportunity he was in the SEC under Coach Bruce Pearl before as an assistant coach, and he'll have Colin Castleton coming back. How about Lamont Paris? He took his team to the NCAA tournament last year, won the SOCON, pays it off with the new job, and wasted no time in recruiting. Yeah, they got Gigi Jackson, the highest rated recruit in school history, who decommits from North Carolina, reclassifies, now a Gamecock, and arguably the most exciting freshman talent in the SEC and you had the amazing call last year in the Southern Conference like without you that say? I'm sorry can you yeah you that? that amazing call that somehow you did not butcher down the stretch <laughs> and it marks madness but the half court shot if that doesn't go in is Lamont Paris back at UT Chattanooga for another year yeah but they got it done and he took over a program that had some issues as well at Chattanooga and, and getting paid off with a big job in South Carolina. Oh, look. Some celebrity action. Photos happening here with under five minutes to play. If there's a time to miss a box out, it's right now. <laughs> or not get back on defense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, six coaching changes. I mean, that, that is a lot. So you, you consider almost half the league is whether you want to call it rebuilding, but they're, they're, I think that leaves for a lot of opportunity for some teams like Texas A&M, uh, Ole Miss. Dane, let me just tell you what just happened here. Oscar Shebray just got fouled by Jerry Flores. Jerry Flores hurt his hand fouling it. Watch number 44, hacked down, and then he looked at his hand and went, ah. Oh. How uh, often do you see a guy hurt his hand by hitting somebody else. Tom Hart when his wife asked him to open the peanut butter jar. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not gonna Got a happen. napkin towel. Yeah. He just, no he, shame he's still us. looking at his hand. <laughs> That's a great pickup. Not laughing with you or at you with you buddy. It would have happened to me too. Shibwe is just an absolute animal. What's the next step in his game? I mean, I think the, the three-point shot, it, it's hard to be that picky. You don't want to try to make him something he's not and just let him continue to be dominant in the in the post, be a good passer out of that double teams, I think, yeah. is key. And then if he can make an outside shot every now and then, he showed a really nice touch last year from 15 feet out to where you couldn't just completely sag off him. I think in terms of passing big men, Colin Castleton was fantastic last yep. year in the league. And the majority of his sit, his assists came on threes. So the ability, you don't usually think of it this way, but the ability of a big to space the floor makes all the difference in the world. Orlando Antigua trying to get some guys in the game. Kareem Watkins, fan favorite. Check in. Brennan Canada already on the floor. We'll see what the next 345 has in store here in the Bahamas. Dane to get his passport expedited so he could make the trip down here. And Was that an event? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. I hope you show yeah. up Thursday. That is tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern on the SEC Network. And 
on the ESPN app. Monterey Tech will be the opponent coming out of Mexico. What time's your shoot around tomorrow? <laughs> As if you care. What did you learn <laughs> watching a shoot around in a language that you don't understand today? Well, I had a pretty good feel. Uh, you know what was interesting was I thought I was learning that what kind of zone they were going to be in, and I haven't really seen them play any zone. <laughs> so my takeaway was, was was pretty much nothing. But I did get to talk to Justin Manaya for a little bit, and it led to a little bit of research and that uh, police that we talked about with uh, that was a player with Orlando Antigua is at Illinois and I talked to coach Antigua and I said you know tell me about him. he said man you know he was such a leader really helped us establish that culture under Brad Underwood I said are y'all still close you talk he goes well, yeah I'm, I'm actually godfather to his new four month old so how cool is that I mean that on a very serious note I mean you, you want to be impactful in a young man's life but when like a former player says, hey, will you be the godfather yeah. of my kid? That, that, that's quite the honor. And the amazing part is the, the opportunity to impact a player. Some of them, you know, aren't really on campus that long. He was a couple years at Juco before he got to Illinois. Oscar just missed a three on the other possession. Here's Canada. Shibwe with an offensive board and a slam. Third, uh, pardon me, 15 points and five rebounds for Oscar Shibwe tonight. I don't know what the uh, promotion is, but I propose that when, if when Kentucky gets to 100, we all get free conch fritters. <laughs> and there it is. That'd be, that'd be about 200 bucks for, for a couple. <laughs> uh, Orlando Antigua, Antigua able to empty the bench. Oscar, 8 of 11 shooting. Missed both threes. 17 points and six boards. Grant Darbyshire. Grant Darbyshire is in the game, so is Walker Horn. Remember Walker's dad, Darren. Now the coach went inside. And uh, by the way, Darren was an assistant on that Final Four team at Marquette. They got a reunion coming up pretty soon. Later on this summer up in Milwaukee. Glad to see Darren back in coaching. Opens up an op opportunity to go to the Bahamas for me. <laughs> Andy Kennedy. I just need everybody to just keep getting into coaching. You might be stuck with me for a long time, man. Of course, Darren was coaching the South Carolina with Devin Downey. Shout out Devin Downey. Uh, dropped 30 on the Cats. Got a big win. Cal's first loss is Kentucky's coach. Rebound by Canada. A nice chat with Darren the other day, and to the point about Andy Kennedy, I just keep chasing everybody back into coaching. When you had Kara Lawson, you got and yeah, she went back into coaching. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, she hadn't coached before, and she said, "I'd rather well, I'd rather I mean, a year on the road with you." The everybody's Celtics. like, "I can't, I can't keep up with this." <laughs> By the way, Kara's got a fantastic recruiting class coming into Duke. You're saying that they've been road weary? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Maybe gain a little weight, <laughs> a little dehydrated, taking too much Advil. Shot clock winding down. Canada steps into this one. Great rotation. Nice. Nice. <laughs> 103 to 56. Superstar. Get to Canada, you gotta find the hot man. 
Horn with the ball fake, looking for an assist. Case of Wallace, you know, just a freshman. He's got to realize this is not his time. He's got to give that up. <laughs> this is not your time to get two extra points. I don't care how close you are to the goal. You got to give that up. Kick it out. Another one coming for Wallace. SEC now is back. They're coming up next. Complete recap of this one. Plus, Josh Heupel joins the show to talk Tennessee football. Marty McGee visit with B.J. Ojolari, LSU defensive end. It's all coming up next on SEC Now tonight, 9 Eastern, 6 Central. Well, that can't be right. That's too many hours in between the Eastern and Central time zone. We'll just say it follows us here. How about 9 Eastern, 8 Central? Now Kentucky with a dominating performance. What impressed you more, the offensive or defensive end? Uh, I would say the defense, which led to the offensive explosion, a highlight reel. And them not playing the scoreboard. I didn't see them let up with their effort at all. They played together. They played hard. And as Coach Cal said, he wants teams to recognize that, and they had fun doing it. And I think that was checked every single box that Coach Cal wanted in the early exhibition. Cats close the game on an 8-0 run. They outscored the Dominican Republic select team 65-31 in the second half. Now rebound them by eight. And Kentucky knocks down 11 threes, shooting 42% from deep in this one, 57% overall. A team that was fifth in the country in offensive efficiency last year was awfully efficient in this one as well, as you might imagine. We got another one coming tomorrow night, but we don't even have to travel for it. That's pretty good. <laughs> My foot here, and uh, once we get a superstar lined up with a little post-game interview, we are steps away from post-game celebration, Tom Hart. You know, what I want to see is you go down that Geronimo water slide tomorrow. That's that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah. Uh, you'll be waiting for a while. So. Well, 108-56, the comfortable victory today, and we are joined by Damian Collins. Got to get the headset on. One oh eight fifty six. How we doing? Good. How about you? Was that fun? Yes, sir. It was fun. All right, we we got to talk about the dunks. I mean, your your game is more than that, but I couldn't uh, you couldn't hide the smile. <laughs> that was an aggressive line when you took off from behind the lake. We, yes, sir. I want you to talk about it, but I want you to walk us through. What are you thinking when you get the ball right here? I mean, I just attack the rim. You know, my posse always told me play above the rim, so that's how I just play. And then the same one in the second half? I mean, did, did you think you were going to make it there, or were you prepared to just have to throw it in? Did you surprise yourself at all? Uh... A little bit, but you know, it's something that I'm uh, used to doing, so I just sticking to the game plan, you know. All right, so I was talking with Toppin earlier today. We we're talking about his vertical. Your, mm -hmm. Yours is right there with them. Have you, we need a, a jump off. I mean, I know Big Blue <laughs> Matt is when I see the dunk contest. Yes, Who can get up higher? Uh, I don't know. We both can get up pretty high. As cool as the dunks were and the highlights, yes, sir. but but you're kind of used to dunks. Mm -hmm. But the pull-up jumpers were pretty sweet too. I mean, what were you most pleased with, the dunks or the pull-up jumpers? Uh, I think just overall, you know, more pleased with the uh, W. You know, just coming out playing hard. You know, just having fun with my team. Yeah, and, and I was talking to some of your assistant coaches before the game, and they said, I said, what what surprised you the most? And they said, No, oh, look, we knew what we had with some of the stars coming back. The freshman we, we expect what we got. One of the biggest things we've seen is just the jump and improvement from year one to year two with, with, with Damian. I mean, what do you think has been the biggest key to your improvement this summer? I mean, I think, uh, you know, just working on my versatility, you know, being more than just an inside player, being able to, you know, space out the floor, you know, the one dribble pull ups and stuff like that. I think that's the uh, thing I've been, I like the most. I don't think play, people understand how much work goes into that. So mm -hmm. walk us through how you get to a point where you build the confidence in that pull-up jumper. I mean, uh, I've been going ever since last season. Ever since the season ended last year, I've been uh, in the gym working hard, you know, all the way up to now. So, you know, just the time I put in on it. 
It's interesting starting five that, that Cal put out there to begin with Oscar mm -hmm. at the three, you at the four. I mean, Oscar at the five and, and Toppin at the three. Mm -hmm. That's a really big lineup. Have you guys talked about or thought about what that length can do once you get in the regular season? I mean, yeah, we, we do talk about it a lot. You know, we, uh, you know, practice, we uh, practice with a lot of different lineups to see uh, how we play with each other, you know. So, like, doing that is something we're used to because, you know, we work on that in practice and stuff like that. So that's something we're pretty used to. I've got the most important question. You've been to the water park. Mm -hmm. Have you gone down the straight down slide and you playing <laughs> yes. to? You've done yes, it? Yes, sir. I did it the first day. <laughs> oh, Scary or, or is it as bad as it looks or was it okay? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I've uh, been on a few, so I'm pretty used to it. All right. He's, They'll be taking those risks. He's a water slide pro. <laughs> Damien, thanks, man. Yes, Congratulations. Sir. Great game tonight. Fun to watch. Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. Damien Collins and his Kentucky teammates will be back out there tomorrow night. It'll be a 7 o'clock tip against the team from Mexico. So the Cats taking on Monterey Tech tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app for Dane Bradshaw. Fantastic crew here in the Bahamas. That'll do it for now. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's see you.